Hi everyone, so this is me, Ms. Hazel Joy Kasawar Mundo from Research Team. Identifying the person and places is the most important step on the process of accumulating or gathering information, either it is quantitative data or qualitative data. Now, it includes identifying which group of people will be your participants and the accurate number of persons to be involved. However, if the population or the total number of people in that place is too large, then you may apply representation. This video is about population and sample. But before that, let us describe representative. Representative refers to the selections of individuals as sample of population that may enable to draw conclusion from the sample about the population as a whole. So who could be the participants of a study? So, sino ba ang iyong target participant? Sino nga ba or ilan ang pwede maging participant of the study? But before that, let us identify the population and sample. Population is a group of people or individuals that share common connection. It was identified by the totality of objects or person under investigation. While sample is a subgroup of population that represent the characteristic and attributes of target populations. Again, sa paghahanap na magiging parte ng inyong study, maaari nalang kumuha ng ilan para mag-represent ng kabuoang bilang or population. For example, you want to identify the intrapersonal skills of students in Montilupa National High School. Hindi na kailangan na tanungin ng lahat ng estudyante. We may use appropriate sampling techniques to determine who will speak for the whole Montilupa National High School. Kailanganin mong sample. How to calculate sample size? The easiest and common way on determining the sample size needed on representing a finite population of individuals will be using the Slovin's formula. It was developed by Robert Slovin that aimed to determine the appropriate number of participants in a survey. This determination of sample size is based on accessibility of the number of the population. Thus, this formula cannot be used without the actual value of total number of population. The formula in determining the sample size is n is equals to n all over 1 plus n e squared, where small n refers to the number of samples, the capital N is for the total number of population, and e refers to the margin of error. Example, find the sample size if the population size is 3,215 at 95% accuracy. So, small n refers to the sample size. Capital N, the population size, which is based on the given, 3,215. Well, the margin of error, so this here, we have 95% accuracy or 5% margin of error or 0 0.05 using the formula substitute so we have 3215 all over 1 plus 3215 multiplied by 0 0.05 squared Simplify it, so we will have 355.73 or 
356 so the number of samples we needed is 356 another example a group of senior high school students that aim to describe the interpersonal skills of the stem students but do not have the resources to survey an entire population of 1556 help them determine the accurate number of respondent that will represent the whole stem students with three percent margin of error what shall be the sample size so using the given we have the capital n the total number of population which is 1556 with the margin of error three percent or 0 0.03 substitute the given to the formula so we will have n is equals to 1556 all over 1 plus 1556 multiplied by 0 0.03 squared simplify so unahin muna natin yung 0 0.03 squared so we could have 0 0.009 then multiply 1556 to 0.009 so we will have 1.4004 plus 1 we will have 1556 all over 2.4004 divide then we will have 648.22 or 648 person meanwhile franklin and wallen 2012 in determining the sample size suggests with regard to the minimum number of subjects needed for descriptive minimum number of 100 is essential for correlational study at least 50 person to establish the existence of relationship while for experimental study they recommend a minimum of 30 individuals per group ngayong alam na natin kung paano kumuha ng bilang ng sample na kailangan natin sa research this time naman na alamin natin kung paano at saan tayo kukuha ng samples so using the different sampling techniques so there are two types of sampling techniques non-probability and probability sampling techniques probability sampling is a method of sampling that employs random selection this process assures that it gives equal chance to all individuals in the population while the non-probability sampling techniques are selected based on the subjective judgment rather than random selections so unahin natin ang mga non-probability sampling techniques convenience sampling is a sampling technique wherein the selection of group of individuals are based on suitable and conveniently of the individual it also called as accidental sampling kung sino lang ang lalapit at malapit sila ang magiging sample let's say the study is about collecting response regarding the experience of people right after visiting museo na mantilupa so you may schedule a visit on museo na mantilupa and ask or do survey or interview to people who are free and available on that time. Quota sampling is used by means of deciding sample numbers that selection of respondent is made out of availability of the respondent. It's just like convenient sampling. Pinagkaiba lang nito, in quota, ikaw ang decide or meron kang certain number of people or samples na kailangan and then when you hit that sample 
or you hit that number of sample, then you are done. Next is purposive sampling. Using researchers' judgment to select a sample that they believe, based on prior information, will provide the data they need. Purposive samplings happen when the selection of sample is based on the characteristic of a population and on the objectives of the study. It's also known as judgment, selective, or objective sampling. Karaniwan, ginagamit ang purposive sampling technique kung may natatanging hinahanap ka or katangi ang hinahanap ka para sa isang sample. Let's say the sample is about teenage pregnancy, which the objective is to showcase the experiences of a teenager living in poblacion area and who got pregnant at early age. With that, the criteria of the respondent should be 1. Teenager 2. Living in poblacion area and 3. Buntis or nabuntis So, isa doon sa mga criteria ang mawala, hindi na siya pa pwedeng makasama as sample. If the needed sample in a study is difficult to find or mahirap hanapin ang characteristic na yun, or yung criteria, so pwedeng gamitin yung snowball sampling technique. Because the use of one sample may lead to one more of the same kind of people. Kung baga, from one, one person, pwede kanya ma-recommend sa isa pang tao. Tapos, yung isang tao na yun, pwede kanya ma-recommend sa iba pang tao. Hanggang sa dumami na ang iyong sample. Let's go now with the sampling technique that employs random selection or the probability sampling technique. This process assures that it gives equal chance to all individual in the population first we have simple random sampling so in simple random sampling drawing a randomly from a list of population this sampling technique where every item in the population has even chance and likelihood of being selected let's say the sample size is 15 and then you have to select it from 50 person in simple random sampling the most common way is you list down all the names and then ilalagay yun sa isang lagayan or sa isang bowl. And then, bubunot ka ng 15 na papel. Kung sino yung mabubunot mo, sila ang magiging sample or sila ang magiging participant of your study. Next is systematic random sampling representative from population are selected according to a random starting point but picks periodic interval like for example in this figure so the population is 12 and then you have to select 4 or the sample size is 4 so here uh the starting point is 2. And then the interval is 3. So, paano niya kuha yung 3? We have population divided by the sample size. So, we have 12 divided by 4 equals to 3. So, the sample or the respondent could be 2. Next is 5. Followed by 8. And then 11. In systematic random sampling, you may list down all the names assigned number to that people or objects and then you decide for a starting point and then kukunin yung interval next is stratified random sampling this method aims to equally or proportionally partition the number of required samples depend on the population of the subgroup or strata In stratified random sampling or stratification, the strata are formed based on members' shared attributes or characteristic. Example, uh, suppose that the poor sample should represent the three groups. In this figure, we have three groups, the blue, 
red, and green. So, based on the subgroup population or strata, the stratified random sample will be obtained using the formula. Let's say the sample size divided by the population size multiplied by the stratum size. So, stratum size in blue, we have 3. In red, we have 6. And green, we have 3. So, we have 3 divided by 12 multiplied by by 4 so we will have 1 so here as you can see from blue we have one sample from the group of or strata near red we have two and then the green we have one another example in a study of stroke outcomes we may stratify the population by sex to ensure equal representation of men and women so the study sample is then obtained by taking equal sample sizes from each stratum. In this sampling, it may also be appropriate to choose non-equal sample size from each stratum. In this sampling technique, it improves the accuracy and representativeness of the result by reducing sampling bias. Next is cluster sampling. In a clustered sample, subgroups of the population are used as a sampling unit rather than individuals. The population is divided into subgroups known as a cluster, which are randomly selected to be included in the study. Appropriate determination of sample size and sampling technique used in a study are the crucial step in the design of a study. Now, to sum it up, uh, knowing the right number of sample and sampling technique, the estimation is more precise and the study may produce more accurate results. Sample size and technique have significant impact on the quality of finding. The small or excessively large sample size potentially leading to incorrect findings now the correct calculation of sample size and choosing the right technique one it may reduce sampling bias it do not waste resources you can maximize the cost and funds and last you may reduce harmful effect or risk to participants specifically when experimental study Hope you learned something new from this video. Bye!